Hi, my name is Ernie Fries. I'm a delivery specialist with Port Carey Fire Trucks, and uh, I'm a uh, volunteer firefighter with the Winter Fire Department, and I started in 1988. Currently, I'm a captain with the department in Winter, which is a city uh, just in southern Manitoba. Today, we're going to go through a uh, generic orientation on a fire truck. We're going to be using this beautiful ER Spartan, uh, which we'll be heading to Fort Francis once we're done. One of the uh, things that the uh, fire trucks and all trucks now have is the diesel exhaust emission system, which was instituted by the federal government. Uh, what that entails is that uh, they're trying to reduce the emissions put out by these trucks, and uh, the system they've used is using a, a fluid called diesel exhaust fluid. Uh, that fluid is uh, kept in a separate tank on the truck, and uh, the way it works is it, it takes a a fine mist and it uh, sprays that into the exhaust as it's leaving the uh, engine of the truck. It then travels through a ceramic filter which captures all the particulates uh, in that exhaust and then uh, the exhaust comes out a lot cleaner. At some point the uh, filter itself, the ceramic filter, uh, gets full of these particulates and needs to be uh, cleaned. The truck then goes into a regen and uh, what that entails is that the filter is, is heated up to a very high degree. It burns up the particulates that have been captured by the filter and then exhausts just the ash out of the exhaust. The issue with that is that the uh, exhaust coming out of the uh, tailpipe when it's doing the uh, uh, regen is it, it becomes very hot and anything that is flammable could ignite if it's close to the exhaust. Okay, there's a few things I want to mention uh, on the front of the truck here. It does have a trash line uh, up front here, a uh, discharge. Uh, also, it has a on the drain underneath the, uh, underneath the front of the truck so that when uh, the pressure has been released on that line, it will automatically drain all the water that is collected in the, in the piping that has a potential of freezing. There's also a tow hook on each, on each side, underneath the, uh, underneath the bumper. Uh, there's also tow hooks at the back of the truck. Uh, those uh, tow hooks are designed for straight line towing only. Uh, any towing off to the side could uh, uh, twist the frame, so we recommend only straight line towing. Also at the front of the truck is your uh, dipstick for your oil. It's really long, so uh, that's one place to check your oil. And you also got the, uh, the, the fill spout right here, so you can add any oil that you may need. One thing that you might need to do is um, adjusting your headlights. And we recommend that you uh, uh, load the truck up, fill the tank with water, uh, put all your equipment onto the truck, and even put your six personnel in the truck, and then make your headlight adjustments at that point. And that would, would be your normal driving uh, conditions. And the normal Phillips screwdriver will do the adjustments for you on that. Okay, some trucks may have a, uh, a bumper turret mounted on the front of the truck uh, for uh, uh, ditch fires or grass fires. Uh, most of them have a joystick control inside the cab which can be controlled by the driver or the officer uh, in the uh, officer's seat. This truck also is a pipe for a monitor. It doesn't have one presently. A monitor can be added. Uh, 
Uh, there's two different types of our monitors. One is a, a manual control where a firefighter will have to uh, mount the top of the truck and control the uh, monitor manually. Or you can have an electric control similar to the command light control to uh, control the uh, monitor. All right, this truck is also uh, equipped with an auto eject shoreline, um, 120 volt. And what it powers is an air compressor and the battery charger. So it keeps the battery uh, charged while it's sitting in the hall. And it also keeps the uh, air up on the, uh, on the air tanks. It does have um, an inverter and uh, in the, one of the compartments and that will power uh, a couple of outlets uh, and, and that's for charging uh, equipment batteries uh, for uh, flashlights and radios and, and those kinds of things. Uh, 15 amp service on that. It is auto eject so as soon as uh, the starter button gets pushed the, uh, the uh, cord will be ejected. The uh, thing you want to watch when you when you plug the truck in is that the uh, gauge lights up on the auto charge and that way you're sure that you've actually got power coming to the truck. This truck is equipped with the power inverter and what that does, it takes your 12 volt and changes it to 120 and your receptacles are up on the wall over on this side and 15 amp uh, service on that so it's used for charging uh, flashlights and radios. Washing and maintenance instructions are here li listed on the uh, side of the truck. So be aware of that and uh, take note and uh, helps to keep your truck looking in tip top shape. Another thing that this truck has is a command light up on top of the cap. And here's the uh, control for that. Your, your switch to turn the lights on it actually has a, a green command light attached to it and that you can turn this uh, turn the light on or off. You have a tilt function on the lights so you can tilt them up or down. And uh, this is your on off switch and your rotate button here. And this is your up and down where it extends the boom and the, uh, the light to the top. If at any time you want to stop, you, hit, you can hit the stop button and it stops all functions at that point. Once you're done with the light, it has a P button and all you have to do is push hold that P button down and the light goes in, into a park position and uh, brings it back down to normal driving conditions. Okay, there's also two more indicator lights over here on the bottom. Uh, one tells you that the uh, light is centered, uh, ready to come down. And this one will come on once the light is elevated. And uh, you will also get a warning inside the cab uh, if the light isn't all the way down that uh, you need to uh, fix it and bring the light to its uh, down position. Once this light turns off, it means it's in its parked position. This truck has adjustable shelving on it. It's got, it has tracks on both sides and this shell can be adjusted to fit your needs. Uh, just a matter of loosening these screws on the bottom here and then they can be raised or lowered uh, to your specifications. I suggest a two-man job because they do they can get jammed in there if, uh, if you try with just one person. Another thing that you'll notice back here is an access panel. There's four access panels all the way around the truck and those panels uh, are to access the uh, body mounts we, when the body is mounted to the frame and those uh, should be checked on an annual basis probably when you do your annual inspection have that checked to make sure that they are still secure. Truck has a extra SUV uh, tank holders. The compartment here will, will handle two tanks and there's also compartments on the other side of the truck again in the fender well. This is your diesel fill in here. Diesel low sulfur. Here on the rear compartment you again have an adjustable tray. You have the access panel for the body mounts and you have a rollout tray here. Put those panel levers down and those out and locks in out position, locks in in position. Rated for 500 pounds on the, on the tray. So close it, push it, lock it.
locks back in place. Okay, there's a few things I want to talk about here. The rear of the truck and the rear compartment. It again has a roll-out tray. Very similar to the other one. It locks in out position and in position. There's another compartment in here. The only thing that's back there is the tow hooks. Again, street line towing. If you need to tow, you don't want to twist the frame. Up here's your traffic advisor for the lights. This is your camera, your, your, your backup camera. And over here is your lab compartment. So you put your 24 foot, your 14 foot, and your and your roof ladder and your uh, attic ladder up in here. And on the two top corners is your uh, suction hose. And there's also room up there for your pipe poles. So there's one on either corner. Access ladder to the uh, top. One thing you need to be aware of is that there are pinch points on this ladder, so you want to make sure that uh, you keep clear of that uh, when deploying the ladder. And always put it back in its uh, park position uh, when you're not when it's not in use. If you're climbing the ladder, always make sure you're facing the facing the truck and always uh, three points of contact. When you're coming down again, you face the truck, three points of contact. And we'll go up on top and take a look at a few things up there. Okay, up here in the Dunwich area, we have the water tower, fill tower. So that can, uh, you can put water in from on, on top. And you also have your uh, foam tower. That's where you uh, put the foam concentrate. You've got a couple of deck lights, one at the front, and there's another one over at the rear, and that's for uh, uh, lighting up uh, the deck when you need to load hose in the middle of the night. And it has a switch at the back of the light to turn the uh, deck lights on or off. Checker plate is not a walking surface, so make sure that you're aware of that. The truck is also piped for a monitor, so a monitor can be attached if, uh, if you need to do that or want to do that at a later date. This truck's got two hose bed dividers and they are movable. So they need to be loosened up at the front and here at the rear, and then they can be moved wherever you need to, uh, need to have them for the hose lays that you're using. Once you've decided where you want your uh, dividers, then there's a, a slot along the bottom here that has a possible catch spot point for your couplers. So there's a, a molding that comes with the truck and you take and you cut the molding to the right size and you just snap it in on, on each, uh, each of these uh, beds and uh, then that will prevent the coupler from catching on there as it's coming off the truck. Yeah, the truck has a hose bed tarp that goes with it and it's got the Velcro attachments all the way around so it has easy access to take it off and put it back on again. All of the compartment doors, including the uh, SCBA bottle door, has contact switches on it to indicate whether they're open or closed. The compartment doors will uh, actually light up inside once you open the door based on a, a, on a magnetic switch that's on the, top of the, on the top of the door. It can happen on occasion that uh, one of these switches becomes a little bit loose or out of adjustment and may need to be adjusted and will show always that the door is open even though the door is closed. You can uh, check which door it is by using the magnet and opening one door at a time and holding it up to the switch. If the light goes off, then you know that's the door. If the light stays on, then you know it is another door that is giving you the problems. So you can go and check each door individually that way and it'll tell you which one is out of alignment. You can then make an adjustment on the switch and bring it into proper alignment so that it will indicate that it is off, it is closed uh, when the door is down. Okay, this, uh, this truck is equipped with the uh, uh, generator. The generator is not installed at this point. The generator will be hooked up uh, to this cable here and that will allow the generator to use the chassis battery for starting. 
The other cable on this side here is to plug into the generator and that then powers the receptacles on the truck from the generator. And again, it has a roll out tray so you can move that generator out if you want to move it to another location. And again, 500 pounds uh, limit on that and then locks in out position or in position. And again, adjustable trays. Now some trucks will have an oil primer and uh, what you need to be aware of there is to use the ecologically friendly oil and the tank is normally located inside the pump house. Another thing this truck does not have and that other trucks have may have is a 360 degree camera. They have cameras located on four sides of the truck and uh, on the monitor you have in the cab gives you a all-around view of vehicles in and around your location and will also provide you with uh, information as to uh, if there's any vehicles in your blind spots. Another thing that the, uh, this truck doesn't have that some may have and that, that is tire pressure monitors. They're installed on the, on the tires. They will uh, give a uh, LED pulse if the tire becomes too low. Okay, we're going to start by uh, looking at a few things inside the cab and we'll start here at the, uh, at the driver's door. Uh, first of all, there's, uh, there's a couple of labels down on the, on the bottom underneath the uh, floorboards there and uh, one of them has to do with the fluids in the truck. It tells you exactly what type of fluids are needed and the volumes that are required. Also, there's a label uh, in regards to the uh, uh, tire pressures uh, for the truck. Down on the bottom, you'll see that there's a couple of ports, uh, connections for, uh, for battery, for your 12 volt. If your battery for some reason has, has gone dead, you can uh, connect an auxiliary battery up to that, up to those connections and, uh, and uh, start, start your truck. Moving up into the cab, uh, right underneath the uh, underneath the dash on the on the driver's side here, there's a couple of data ports that uh, OBD port and your OBD port and your VDR port. There's also two switches down there, and one is the manual regen or parked regen, and the other one is inhibit regen. Those are used for the regen system. Further on up, there's the master switch, the ignition switch. And the starter button. On the side of the uh, steering column is uh, is a couple of uh, switches. And one is your normal signal light switch, and uh, below that is your steering wheel adjustment. One thing that you can see right now also is the airbag system. Underneath the, uh, uh, at, the at the driver's knees are two airbags that uh, will deploy when necessary, and there's also knee bag uh, airbags at the uh, on the officer's side of the uh, truck. Also, uh, there are curtain, window curtain airbags that will deploy on the drivers, passengers, and on the cabin crew also on all, all four windows. Also on this side of the truck are the windshield washer fluid uh, where you put that in. And on this side of the seat is air ride seat, is your, sw is your switch for uh, in increasing and decreasing your the, the height. And then further on inside, there is the adjustment to move the seat back and forth. Okay, in the cab here now, there's uh, your standard gauges on the truck. On the left-hand side, you have your RPMs, and you've got the uh, two uh, air tanks, which will give you the pressure of your, of your primary and your secondary air. In the center, you've got your speedometer, and you've got your fuel gauge, and you've also got a DEF gauge. Uh, your diesel exhaust fluid has a gauge also. Over on the right hand side here is your uh, oil pressure, your uh, coolant temperature, your voltage meter, and your transmission uh, temperature. With the uh, DEF gauge, uh, you want to make sure that you don't run out of, out of the diesel exhaust fluid uh, because if you run it without it, you could end up in limp mode. Uh, which means that the truck will only go in idle. So you want to make sure that you always have enough uh, fluid in the truck. What I recommend is that once you are down to a quarter, a quarter tank, then you uh, can 
fill in a large jug, uh, a, a full-size jug, and it will fit into the uh, into the tank, and then we'll, it'll bring you very close to full. Under normal conditions on highway driving, uh, my experience has been it uh, uh, it regens about once every two thousand kilometers, and you can go through quite a number of of uh, fuel tanks before you need to uh, fill in the uh, diesel exhaust fluid. Down on the uh, below the, the uh, gauges is a uh, message s uh, monitor uh, message system. Uh, it has a couple of buttons here, and also uh, beside it are the all the indicator lights that will come on, uh, giving you all kinds of warnings and uh, and advises advises of what's happening with your truck. Uh, your manuals will give you all the details. Uh, of what each of those lights uh, represent. Moving over onto this side here is the your windshield washer and your windshield wiper. Down here is your pump and gauge, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Here's your VMUX screen, and uh, we'll we'll talk about that also. This next here is your uh, traffic uh, advisor, and I'll just turn the master on. This traffic advisor is your lights on the back of the truck, and we'll we'll. Uh, indicate what you would like traffic to do. Either go left, right, split, or just a warning message. So you have a high, off, and low. So low can be used at nighttime and high can be used at uh, during the day. Down here is your siren control. That's a fairly standard siren control. You got manual and, and uh, uh, an air horn. Uh, over here on this side here. Over here is your uh, heating and air conditioning control. Your air conditioning button is in the center here. Here, this dial controls where you want the airflow. This is your temperature control. And then you've got two, uh, two fan controls here, one for the front and one for the rear. So the rear has its own heating system in the back and uh, the front has its uh, seating system on, on the front here. There's a warning light over here if any of the compartments are left open and uh, that will flash and you will have an audible alarm coming. You've got interior lights here, you've got a red light and you've got a white light. Over here is your spotlight control. There's two spotlights mounted on the top of the truck, on the driver's side and on the, pa on the officer's side. Your on-off switch switches it on and off and then your con joystick controls the uh, the motion of the of the, of the switch. This is your park brake, and over here is your mirror adjustment. It has uh, electric mirror adjustment, so you turn it this way to go up and down, and you turn it this way for the driver's side, and uh, control it that way. This is your uh, transmission control here. Uh, I believe it's a six-speed automatic Allison, and it's a, it's a just a, a push button, drive, neutral, and reverse. If the transmission is warm and you have it in neutral, you can you can go through the diagnostics of the transmission. And how you do that is with the transmission in neutral and the park brake uh, applied, you can push the on the push the up and down button simultaneously. And what's going to show up on the screen here, it's going to say settling, and it's going to count down. Uh, from probably about 90 seconds down to zero. And once the oil uh, transmission fluid has settled in the transmission, it will then go through the diagnostics. It'll tell you what your, what your, what your level of uh, fluid is in your transmission. You can push the two buttons again and it will then tell you what the status of your filter. And you push the two buttons again and it will tell you whether there's any codes uh, from the transmission. And you keep pushing the, the two buttons until you come back to uh, back to normal and you push the neutral button and you're back to regular operation. Okay, some trucks have what's called a smart control, a Wayland smart control, uh, where all of your lights and sirens are all in one box. Uh, this one switch controls all the lighting and it's uh, it's got three stages and uh, usually those are the uppers and then they add the lower and if I go to the third one, the siren will actually come on. I won't do that right now. Then you've got all your siren controls right along the top here, the different ones, depending on what you want. Then you've got some of your uh, your your lights, your your scene lights over here, uh, left scene, right scene, 
and your step lights. Sometimes they will even have the traffic advisor in here. Uh, I have, have another button over here for traffic advisor. This one doesn't have it, but uh, that's a, another thing that's available on the smart siren. Some trucks would have uh, the feature, a four x four feature or a diff lock feature or even an axle lock feature. And those switches would be uh, situated on the, on the dash somewhere. Here's an example of the uh, diff locks and the axle lock switches. Uh, just a matter of it's just a toggle switch. You would you would switch it, and on your dash you would show tell you that the axle lock has been activated, uh, and the diff lock, and then this one would be your axle lock uh, to lock your axles. And again on the dash you would get an indicator seeing that your axles have been locked. Okay, this truck is equipped with multiplexing. And uh, it also has a VMUX system in it, which uh, controls a lot of your uh, uh, functions on the truck itself. One of the things that tr the, the truck shows a diagram of the truck here, and that tells you whether there's any doors open. I'm just going to open the, the driver's door here, just to show you what happens when the, when the drive when any one of the compartments is open, or any one of the the doors is open. Uh, you'll get an indication saying that the doors are ajar. On the bottom here is a, a button called E-Master, and by pushing that button, it turns all your emergency lights on, every one of them. And you've also got a warning menu, which is all your emergency lights. Now you can control them individually. You can control your alternating headlights by turning them on or off, or your rear warning lights, or your light bar, side warning, front warning. So each one of them can be controlled separately or uh, just one button will turn them on or off. Next is just your home button, which brings you back to your main menu at any time uh, you, need, you wanna go to that. On your main menu, you've got a, a headlight switch on the top here. This, it's right now it's programmed that your headlights will be off when you start. You push it on just for your, once for your marker lights and you push it a second time for your low beams and it will tell you whether you've got your high beams or low beams on just by uh, flicking the switch on the uh, on the signal light. The dimmer switch, a dimmer max, it's a dimmer switch and it just dims the, the screen here itself for, for nighttime, you don't might not want it as, as bright so you can uh, uh, change that. This one is the auxiliary brake, your exhaust brake, uh, again, on or off. Then you have your lighting menu, and that is all your extra, your scene lights, left scene, front scene, right, right scene, rear scene, and your step and panel lights. Step and panel lights have to be on for the pump panel light to come on. So you want to make sure that uh, you, you, you turn that light on at nighttime, especially if you're going out to do uh, any type of uh, uh, work with the pump panel. Camera select the uh, truck is equipped with the rear camera and it'll it'll show you by by uh, touching that that the uh, what's at the back of your truck it will come on automatically when you put the tr uh, truck in reverse now to get back to normal you have to touch approximately where you think the camera button was you've got an engine fan and that is the uh, coolant fan in your engine you can turn that off or on it will go on automatically if the thermostat in the truck uh, determines that it needs to be, it, it needs to come on because the engine is getting warm. Next is your horn select button to determine what happens on your, on your horn button on your steering column. Right now it's set to horn. I push it once and then it'll give you the air horn and you push it again, then it will actually activate the siren by pushing this button. So under normal conditions, you would have it on the, on the horn and uh, when you're traveling on an emergency, you may want to switch that to siren. The next button is your mud and snow, and that is your traction control uh, activation there. You have uh, heated mirrors, so you can turn those on and off. And you also have uh, the ability to lower the, the rear uh, suspension uh, kneeling by pushing that button. It releases the air out of the back and you'll get a light coming on on the dashboard seeing that uh, that the uh, truck is in a kneeling position. So that it's a warning so that you need to uh, disable the kneeling before you uh, move, move the truck. You have a secondary menu 
And uh, what this is for is you've got two fans, one on either side of the on the windshield, and it turns the fan on, on off. There is a switch at the fan. The switch doesn't do anything, so all your controls are over here. There's also uh, heaters underneath the driver's seat and underneath the officer's seat, which can be controlled from here, uh, low, medium, high, and off. System info just gives you some information about the engine, transmission, chassis, and service info. And then on the right hand bottom corner is your high idle. Diesels don't like to be, don't like to idle. So you can just put that in high idle. That keeps the, uh, the engine warm, especially in winter time. One thing that you'll notice also when you start up the truck is that it's gonna, it's gonna give you seatbelt indicators on the first screen when it, when it uh, starts up and it'll give you a red light if the if there's a firefighter occupying that seat and once he attaches his seat belt the uh, indicator will turn to green okay to engage the pump you've got your pump engage switch over here and you have a road and pump mode when you come to a scene you uh, bring the truck to a stop put it in neutral and apply the parking brake. At that point, you can then engage the pump. You pull the switch forward out halfway, leave it for a second or two, and continue all the way down to the pump pulling. The first light will come on and it'll say pump engaged. You now turn to the transmission and you pump in drive. You push the drive button and it will indicate that it's going to fourth gear here and you're okay to pump light will come on and that you're then ready to move to your pump panel and uh, start up the pumping operations to disengage it's uh, just everything in reverse you want to make sure that your truck is an idle it's, it's come down to its lowest revs and you, first thing you do is you disengage the transmission and you put it to neutral. You check your, trans, your speedometer and make sure that your, your speedometer reaches zero because the speedometer will be in operation while the pump is engaged. So make sure the, the speedometer gets to zero and at that point again you can then disengage the pump. This truck also has a manual override on the pump panel and that lever will and will move as you're engaging the pump so just really be aware of that that uh, that lever is going to move when you're engaging and disengaging the pump and if you are not sure you got pump engage and disengage instructions right on the dash here okay you'll notice underneath the front dash is the uh, electrical panel, all the fuses and the circuit breakers are all uh, underneath here so you have good access to them if you if you need them. Also what you'll notice up over here is some uh, labels, some instructions as to uh, the diesel exhaust system. On the officer side of the, of the uh, dash you've got a couple of switches there. You've got some power points, USB ports and a cigarette style lighter style port. You've also got the Q2B switch to turn that siren on and you've also got the siren brake over there and you've also got a horn button for the officer. Okay, this truck is equipped with helmet holders for all uh, firefighters and uh, the way they operate is you take your, your D-ring and you hook it over top of the uh, latch there and you bring this red part between the helmet and your shield and you bring and hook this ring right up over that D-ring also and your helmet is secure. To release you just lift this up, bring it back in and your helmet is free. Okay the uh, truck has uh, SCBA holders on the uh, four seats in the back here plus the officer's seat. SCBA sits in the holder here 
it may need to be adjusted based on the, uh, the style of uh, SCBA and bottle that you are using. Uh, once you uh, put the bottle in up against the, the brackets here, you pull down the head of the uh, locking device and that locks it in place. Once you're ready to release the SCBA, you have a handle on the seat and you just pull the handle up and that releases the SCBA uh, from the uh, holder. All right, we're gonna take a look under the, under the cap. Uh, this is the cap control and here's the uh, amp lift uh, connection. Uh, just attach that. And the uh, control has a U and a D, which means up or down. So we're going to lift the cap at this point. When you're lifting the cab up, you're going to hear uh, a clink like that, and that means that the yellow safety lock is in place. And uh, once it, once it's up this up in this position, just leave it on there. Do not do not bring the cab down onto the safety lock because it's got two pistons on either side, but it's only got the safety lock on the one. It's going to twist the cab if you bring it back onto that. When we when we lower the cab. We're going to use the control again, and we're going to re we're going to re release the safety by pulling on this cable. We'll bring the we'll bring it up. Bring it up. You notice that a little red light has come on here now. Once we've lifted the cab, now what happens is when we drop the cab, the cab will come down, and you need to keep the down button operational and pushed until this little red light comes off. And the reason for that is that these hooks over here, one on either side, is what hold the cab in place when the cab is down. So once the cab is down, you keep the down button going, it engages the hooks. Once the hooks are engaged, the light will go off and your cab is secure. All right, now we're going to go to the cab. You heard the squeak and the locks are in place. Okay, um, we're looking at the engine here and uh, it has some places are easy to access, some places are not. Uh, you check your belts uh, underneath there. One thing this Spartan has here is a, is a valve, which you can see right, right underneath the door there. And that is your heating valve so that it, it draws the heat by the coolant from the engine to the heater underneath the seats in the back of the cab. During summertime, you would want to turn that off so that you don't have that coolant going back and heating up the uh, cab when you actually would want air conditioning. So that's something that needs to be turned off in summer and turned back on in winter. Here we've opened up the back panel behind the cab into the pump house. Gives you good access there. You can see right here, this, this uh, is the uh, full manifold. Uh, anything having to do with the water flowing under that manifold is has a has a foam uh, has a foam concentrate with it. This is the the flow meter here, and this here is your injector. This injects the foam into the uh, into the pipe, and that uh, this meter determines how much water is flowing and how much foam has to be injected based on the percentages that you uh, that you set the wheels on the cab, one on this side and one on that side over there. On this side is the, uh, the hydraulic pump to raise the cab. All right, so that, that pump has the, ex the oil here and the pump is located in here. If for some reason the pump doesn't work, you do have a manual uh, lift right here. There's a, there's a, a a handle that goes with it to do that and you also have posts over here to actually connect uh, a, a 12, 12 volt power source onto there and then that will operate the uh, the pump using that 12 volt power source. This side is very similar. It's got two uh, covers. Comes out. 
This is your, your batteries are located in this area here. And uh, up here you've got a number of, of different fuses for your command light, generator, and your foam system. So those are circuit breakers for, for those items. Let's say the command light, if the cam, command light was tripped, this little lever would be down, okay? And you just flip it back up to, uh, to reset it. I'm just using this as an example. Reset it, flip it up. This is also a lot of electrical. In behind this round box is also quite a number of fuses and, and connections for the electrical of the uh, truck. And there's a main bus fuse a circuit breaker right here. Okay, we're looking at the uh, officer's side of the pump house and that's where the uh, foam pro system is uh, situated. The, the pump is right in this area here and your line coming from your tank is this plastic line right here going into the pump. And there's a check valve underneath there and there's the main shutoff valve, yellow handle, right in this area here. There's another uh, uh, T connection underneath and that is for, for a drain, and that will just drain to atmosphere. You, if you open that up, your uh, foam will, will drain out and you can drain it back into a pail. And that you would use if you were ever uh, changing from one concentrate to another, another brand or something, because it's not a good idea to mix brands. So if you're changing brands, you can, you can drain it uh, using that, uh, that, center, that center bell. Then coming up on, on, up on this side is the uh, strainer. It's a little little brass strainer, right? You can see it right here, and uh, uh, that should be checked every so often uh, to make sure that the, that the strainer remains clean. Uh, just make sure that you turn the turn the valve off so that you don't lose all your concentrate when you're uh, when you're opening uh, to take a look at the strainer. The uh, concentrate then goes up this way into the pump and then it gets dispersed uh, on through the, uh, the foam manifold uh, in the truck uh, above the pump. All right, over here is the calibrate eject valve. And when it's in this position, it is its normal operating position. These hoses are normally not here. They're uh, just uh, down to atmosphere. That valve is used to, to calibrate the uh, the foam pump to the to the right percentage. What can happen is uh, if you run out of foam or at, at the beginning uh, when you're putting new foam in, you may get an airlock in, in the hoses here and you, and you can't get the foam concentrate to move. What you can do then is you can just move this down into the calibrate mode and then once you see foam concentrate coming down the hose then you know that the foam has reached the pump and then you should have no problems after that and then you've been able to get rid of all of the air. So I'll move it back into its normal operating position. Okay, we're on the uh, driver's side of the uh, uh, pump panel and looking inside the pump house. Uh, one of the things here I want to show you is the pressure sensor right over here and that's for the uh, discharge. And then over here is a strainer and that is for the heat exchanger that it needs to be checked every so often just to make sure that it is clear. Now, further on down below where my finger is now is the uh, another sensor, and that's the intake, intake sensor. And further over on, uh, further on down uh, on the manifold that's going across the, the front of the pump is the, uh, that's the foam manifold, and uh, the foam injection system uh, is, is right there, and also the uh, flow, flow meter is also there to determine how much uh, concentrate is supposed to be injected into the foam based on the input on the gauge. Okay, last but not least, we're at the uh, pump panel and uh, we were talking inside about the uh, uh, engaging the pump and when the, when the pump gets engaged, this throttle ready light will come on and there's actually a duplicate right here on the uh, in control and the, on the pressure governor, that light will come on also. So those are the things as far as uh, 
controlling from uh, inside the cab. I want to start on the bottom, there's the uh, heat shield on the bottom of the <coughs> pump house and that keeps it protected in winter time from the cold. Um, one pin on either side and they slide out from either side to remove them. Coming back to the uh, panel itself, we'll go look at the discharges. You'll notice that they're all color coded. So uh, let's say your speed lane one is orange, the gauge is orange, and the, and the drain is also orange. So everything is, is color coded. Your number one discharge here is yellow, gauge is yellow, and the drain is yellow. So that way it's all color coordinated. It's easy, it's easy to, to determine which, uh, which is which. The uh, discharges are arranged in an in a easy fashion to remember as far as numbering goes. Uh, discharge one is here, discharge two is here. So this is your control for discharge two, your control for discharge one. The rest of the controls are all uh, T lever, lever action uh, dis, uh, controls and the, they're numbered starting at this location with number one and moving counterclockwise around the truck. So your discharge number three is at the rear of the truck, your number four discharge is on the other side and your four inch storts discharge is also on the other side. You're going to have some drains on this side and you're going to have some drains on the other side. Your master drain he is here and it's just a, a, a turn. These, these uh, drains are quarter, a quarter turn and now it's open and now they're closed. Now on the bottom here is a, is a, a lever. That's your manual pump shift override. When you're controlling the pump and gauge from inside the cap this lever is going to move, all right? So just leave that as is, and it will, it will, you would only use that if you needed to override it and the control inside was not functioning. If you need to use the manual override, you would put the switch on the dash in the center position, and that releases all pressure going in and out, and uh, that way you would then be able to engage or disengage using the override over here. So again, remember to put the switch in the center position, then this one will function for you. The truck has a trash line up front and the front bumper, which we looked at earlier. And this truck has a foam system, which we looked at. There's two lines that have foam. The trash line has foam and the speed lay has foam. The speed lays, and again labeled speed lay two, speed lay one, and it's marked as a foam, so you know that that is a foam outlet. The controls are push-pull, pull it, and lock. Okay, they all, all work the same and you can tether them, tether them back if you need to. This is your monitor line. There's no monitor attached on it at the present time, so that one should always stay closed. You've got two uh, meters on here, provision, foam, and water, giving you an indication of uh, how full your tanks are. So these are your discharges here. At the end here is your tank fill. If you want to fill your tank uh, using uh, your intake and if you're going to use your tank water to pump then your tank to pump is over here. If you're pumping from the tank you have to remember you, you've only got 500 gallons per minute availability to that. Using a hydrant whatever your hydrant is going to produce uh, would be available to you. You have your main intake on this side and you have a main intake on the other side. You have a, a two and a half inch intake on this side and you have a two and a half inch intake on the other side. And again, the controls are right at the, at the intake. Primer is right here. And it's an oilless primer, uh, meaning there's no, no oil to uh, grease the veins. One thing that you should remember is that because it's oilless, it's a good thing to run some water through it, like allow some water to flow through it while you're using the primer. One thing that you can do is uh, when you're draining, when you're draining the pump at the end of your scene, you've got all your drains open, your valves are open, and your caps are open. And that's the order in which you need to do that. 
And once you've drained everything, you can close everything up again and then you can you can use your primer to drain the last little bit of water out of the, uh, out of the pump. Your uh, foam system is controlled right here. Here's some uh, diagrams of the system, how it works and your specifications for the foam system. It's basically an on off switch. The two foam lines, this one and this one will then produce foam. You would switch it on, dial your percentage, and now you're gonna get that percentage. The light's gonna come on solid right now because the tank is empty and that's what you're gonna get with the, uh, with the, uh, an empty tank is uh, the solid light's gonna come on. If you're, if you're pumping foam with these two lines, you still can discharge with the other lines, but you're getting straight water out of those, out of those lines. You have uh, your heat exchanger and your bypass valve over on this side. Uh, again, if you use those, those should be all, again, closed off, just like you close everything off at the end of the scene. You want to make sure that those, those get closed off. The heat exchanger, what the heat exchanger does, it takes the, some of the water that you're, you're flowing and bypasses it past the engine coolant to, to help cool the engine. The bypass, what the bypass does, it takes a small amount of water and uh, uh, takes it from the pump and moves it back into the tank uh, to try and keep cool water in the uh, pump when, it, when it's not flowing any water. Uh, the other way of, of uh, cooling your pump is by using your tank to pump and your tank fill, crack your tank fill open a, a little bit and uh, again you're going to circulate water that way. These uh, uh, little ports up here are for, uh, for testing, uh, testing the pressure on the pump when doing the, uh, doing the pump tests. You've got two switches here, uh, pump house light for the inside the inside the pump house, and you've also got a pump house heater. You've got two heaters in the in the bottom corners of the pump pump house, and that actually warms warms the uh, pump house up uh, during the winter months. So that uh, just switch that on, and, and you'll you'll get uh, heat into your uh, into your pump house. Again, there's uh, numerous labels on the truck. Class A foam, warning messages. Here's your testing, testing label. Tank fill procedures over here. Your hail message here, and your tank uh, specifications over there. And down here again are your drain procedures for uh, for draining the pump after a seam. Okay, what I want to talk a little bit about is the uh, in control 400 here, and that is the uh, your basic pump control. It's your electronic governor. The electronic governor can be run in two different modes. It can be run in pressure mode or it can be run in RPM mode. Running in RPM mode is similar to running in the older trucks where you had a throttle control and your pressure control valve. This, is your, this would be your throttle control when you're running in RPM mode. And you have an idle button to push to bring, bring it back down to idle. If you're drafting or you're trying to get draft out of a portable tank or, or a static uh, uh, water supply like a lake or a river, you're gonna to have to start in RPM mode. It has a preset. By pushing the preset, will automatically preset it to 1200 RPMs. And that's a good RPM to try and uh, get your prime set up. So you set up your uh, suction hose, your strainer into your, into your uh, portable tank. You would then use your primer and get prime. Once you've reached pressure on your on your discharge size side, you know that you've uh, you've gained uh, gained pressure and that you're uh, you're ready to uh, ready to pump. At any time, you're able to switch from RPM mode to pressure mode just by holding the button in. It it'll switch between the two, it, but nothing changes. The RPMs will stay the same. The pressure will stay the same. So nothing changes except now you're controlling by the amount of pressure that, you're, that you want on your discharge. On, on this display up here, it's gonna read, it's gonna tell you what your goal is as far as discharge goes. You can increase it or you can decrease it. It has a preset and it's probably set at 150 PSI. So if that's what you want, you just push preset and it, and it ramps up to 150 PSI. You can then make minor adjustments using the dial. If any time once a 
a discharge is opened up, the governor will automatically adjust the RPMs to try and maintain your pump discharge at your pre at your set uh, amount that you that you have dialed into the the governor. When the firefighter closes the discharge, again, the the governor will then lower the RPMs to bring you to bring it back in line with your uh, desired pressure. Anytime a, a, a discharge is opened or closed, the governor will govern that for you. It's important to note to let your uh, firefighters know that you open and close valves slowly. The engine cannot compensate quickly by jamming a, a valve closed. You will, you may get a bit of a water hammer if they do close the valves uh, uh, too swiftly, and the engine cannot compensate for that. The uh, pressure, if you're tr if you're trying to use, let's say, two different uh, pressures, you want uh, a certain amount of pressure on your discharge number two. Uh, you want 100 psi here, but on your discharge three, you want 120 psi. What you would do, you would set this for your higher amount of 120 psi, and then you would use the discharge here to feather back. Uh, you would only open it up enough to get to get you your 100 psi on your on your individual gauge over here. For that to work, the water has to be flowing because as soon as this he stops flowing, it's going to go up to the pressure that's shown on the uh, on the uh, on the pump discharge. Once he opens up his nozzle again, it will again go back down to the preset amount that you've set here for your 100 psi. So at any time, you, you can switch between the two. It won't make, it won't uh, change the RPMs or it won't change the pressure. The only time it'll change pressure is actually by dialing, uh, dialing in the, uh, the pressure you want. Bring it to idle, you just push this idle, idle button and it brings everything down, uh, down to idle. It has a menu button here. It gives you engine information, engine temp, oil pressure, battery, engine hours, transmission temperature, pump hours, and then back to engine temperature. You have a, you have a, a silence button here if, if you have a warning going off. The uh, governor has a low water feature in that if the water, the, your water supply gets, uh, gets low, uh, it's going to uh, uh, try and maintain that pressure. But if your tank runs empty, and you end up with no water, even though you're calling for 120 PSI, the governor is gonna try and maintain that, but it, it can't do that because there is no water and the engine's gonna rev up and it's gonna try and if it doesn't, if it doesn't uh, gain any pressure or any water, it will rev back down, uh, down to idle. And then a few seconds later, it will try again to see if water has been, uh, it has sourced some water and it'll try again, it'll try three times before it'll, uh, it'll shut down and then you will need to have uh, operator input as to determine what your next move is so that if you do end up with no water, the engine will rev down to, to an idle. You also have uh, indicators here for the, uh, for the engine, uh, uh, indicators for your uh, battery uh, oil pressure, temperature and, uh, and coolant, uh, coolant temperature. Okay, well, these handles all have a locking feature on it. The uh, quarter turn and the, it's locked in that position. So you can lock it at in, in any, any position you want, okay? All the handles have that feature. Inside the speed lane, we've got a couple of trays. You can slide out. You can slide them out, put them on the floor, and put your hose, lay into it and slide it back into the, uh, into the compartment for easy deployment. And that's on both the top and the bottom. And the discharges are both on top of it, on top of the tray. Okay, this is your main intake uh, for the pump. Uh, this truck does not have a built-in uh, main intake valve. So uh, one, uh, a manual one would need to be attached to the steamer port here. Uh, to allow for uh, uh, hydrant connections. Uh, 
And if you have a valve right here, you can actually use the, your tank water uh, while the hydrant is being hooked up. And uh, once you got, once you have your hydrant connection, you can then uh, open that valve and uh, use your hydrant water. And when, when that happens, you will also notice that because you have it being a pressurized source, that your engine, if you're in pressure mode on your governor, is going to de is going to decrease your engine revs because you've got pressure coming in from your hydrant, and therefore your pump doesn't have to work as hard to to uh, put out the uh, pressure output that you that you've requested. The one thing that you may want to be aware of is that if the pressure is uh, if you're relaying from another pump your pressure may be quite high that you're getting at your main intake and you may have to feather back on your uh, discharges to maintain uh, proper pressures that the firefighter is able to handle. Some trucks had a foam fill, an electric foam fill that would probably be a, uh, attached right around this area here. Uh, what that enables uh, you to do is to have your, your pail uh, standing on the ground here, you would have a foam tube that we would put into the pail, attach it to a, a, an outlet right here. You would have two buttons on, on that control. One is manual control and one is automatic. You would push the automatic button and the pump would then start moving the foam from your pail up into your tank. And once the tank is full, it would automatically shut off. So however many pails you need, you would just have to keep adding the number of pails. Once your pump stops and it's full, then you would take your foam uh, fill tube out of the pail. You would hit your manual button a few times just to remove any foam that is in the, in the system and in the, in the tube and get that up into the, into the tank. And then I would take, you would take a five gallon pail of clear water, put the foam tube into that pail of water you would have another control similar to this one, and it would be it would be for flushing the foam system, the foam pump system. You would turn that to flush, and you would push the manual button, and it would take the the clear water, flush it through the system, and clean all the ex excess foam out of the pump and and the and the plumbing, and keep holding that manual button until that pail is empty, and that'll all flush it down to. Uh, in, in, into the atmosphere on, on, the, on the ground. One other thing that you want to watch if you've got some longer operations is, uh, is keep an eye on your, on your gauges and also watch your fuel levels and watch your oil pressures, watch your diff level to make sure that you uh, maintain those levels uh, even after a, a, a number of hours of operation. Okay, this is the typical paperwork that goes along with a uh, delivery and so I'll explain a little bit about that. I'm going to start on the center column right here because that's the, that's the warranty uh, section. So uh, this is the Allison transmission warranty, the Cummins warranty and right here we've got a Freightliner warranty but that will depend on what uh, brand of truck has been, uh, has been purchased. All of these have the customer's name and information on it and what is basically required on here is the customer's signature and in most uh, and a delivery date and uh, on some of them will require a mileage. On the Cummins will require a mileage down here and signature and date in service. On the Freightliner will be, this, will be the same thing, serial numbers, in service date and uh, the mileage at delivery with the signature and a date on the bottom there. Over here is the Fort Gary warranty and that deals with all the, the paint and the body etc etc on the Fort Gary side of it, on the body side of it and on it's a three page document and on the third page is again the signatures of the customer and the Fort Gary signatures again requiring odometers uh, and the, uh, the date some of the other documents here is a driver delivery report, which he uh, fills out and, and, and hands back into the, uh, the, the, the plant. This is a factory follow-up form. If there's any items that were noticed during the delivery, 
uh, that needed to be looked after, they could be motored on here and uh, and turned in back to the uh, plant, and then that could be looked after uh, by uh, by a service personnel. This over here is just a checklist for the driver to check off to make sure he's got all the forms required uh, that need to be handed in back to the uh, back to the plant. And uh, here's an instruction sheet for the driver, uh, giving him instructions as to how to look after all of this paperwork. On this side here, we've got a four-page document, and this is a, a checklist of all the items that uh, are dealt with during the orientation. And they need to be checked off, and the customer needs to initial each page and sign on the last page uh, that all of these items have been covered and that the customer is familiar with them. This document here is a, is a delivery checklist, again, uh, making sure that all of the items that are required have been filled out and the customer and the Fort Gary signs this, this document to be uh, handed in back to the uh, uh, manufacturer. Hi, my name is Gwen Graham. I'm the service and warranty supervisor here at Fort Gary Fire Trucks. I wanted to first congratulate you on the purchase of your new Fort Gary fire truck. And I'm here to talk about the warranty process for you. So with your new unit, you would have received a delivery package that will have all the warranty paperwork for the chassis, the transmission, and the engine. These forms need to be filled out and sent back as soon as possible. We need to have the date and the current kilometers so that I can have them registered with the corresponding manufacturer. So you can do this by signing the paperwork and handing it back to your delivery driver, or if your truck was delivered by another method, you can email them to me at gram at fgft.ca, or you can fax them into my attention at 204-694-3230. All warranty requests need to come through the warranty department at Fort Gary Fire Trucks. You can either contact me again by email gram at fgft.ca and all I need from you is the problem with the truck and the MSO number. The MSO number is important because I need to be able to identify your unit in our system and that is our manufacturer serial number and it makes it far easier to track. So once we have your claim in process, if you need to have work done and you're around Fort Gary Fire Trucks, we will make arrangements to have your truck come in to be repaired. If you are not close to Fort Gary Fire Trucks, we will make sure that we have one of our subcontractors come out and have a look at your truck, or we can send one of our own service technicians from Winnipeg to your unit and repair it on site. If you have a warranty concern regarding the chassis, you can still contact me and I will help make arrangements to have these issues looked at with the manufacturer of your chassis. If you need parts, I can also send you the parts out. What I will need from you, I'll need the used parts returned to me. I will give you an RMA number and generally the work order assigned to your unit to have those parts come back. I need to have the parts back within 30 days of the repair. If I don't get the parts back, Unfortunately, we will have to charge you for those parts. The one thing I ask is please do not initiate a warranty claim through your salesman or the delivery driver. Unfortunately, things get misinterpreted, misunderstood, or sometimes forgotten. So if you again contact me, gram at fgft.ca, send me a little blurb what you're feeling the issue is, and we will look after you. All of our warranty claims are kept in a database here at Fort Gary Fire Trucks, and they are all gone over once a week. Claims for warranty that have not been approved in writing will not be paid out, unfortunately. So again, any warranty concerns whatsoever, just shoot me an email, gram at fgft.ca, or you can send a fax to my attention at 204-694-3230. And thanks again for your purchase of your Fort Gary fire truck.